The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. This is a relatively long reading, and so I invite you to be seated today. And I also invite you as we enter into this reading, whether you do better by reading along or you do better just by listening and imagining yourself in the story, I invite you to listen for the story of this woman who is at a well at noonday. A woman who, at least some suggest, is coming to the well at that time because, quite frankly, that was when she could avoid those other women in the community who might be about the business of shaming and shunning her. A woman who was trying to avoid people. And then she met someone. Listen for what the story is for her. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town, to, into the city, to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go, tell your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you, are now, you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews." But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. 
Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor." Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world, the Gospel of the Lord. This encounter with Jesus comes in a very specific place. The narrator communicates not only that this event happens in Samaria, a place and a people who are considered unclean by good Jews. The narrator further in identifies Jacob's well as the specific location for this meeting. So though the Samaritan people identify deep roots with the Israelite tradition, the good and faithful Jews of the temple would not recognize them as such. In this place, Jesus comes to the well at noon, at midday, during the cooler parts of the day, such as in the morning and in the evening, this well would be the women's place. It would be a bit like the interior, the kitchen, or even the bedchambers, that space within the house. It would be private space, the domain of women. Yet at midday, this space is really public space. Still, in, it is a place where men and women who do not know each other would not interact with one another. Now, vestiges of this separation still exist in certain cultures throughout our world. I recall when, when I was introduced to a woman of Middle Eastern um, heritage, and I reflexively stuck my hand out to shake her hand, and she crossed her hands and stepped back. Private space. It is here, at this well, in the heat of the day, that Jesus encounters a woman. And more than that, Jesus engages her, asks her for a drink, and she is astonished that a Jew, indeed a stranger to her, would ask for water. In their conversation, Jesus invites her into a closer relationship. Where they started with no relationship, they came closer and closer. In a way, he invites her into his circle of friends, into his family, into his followers. And in that process, he demonstrates that he knows her history. And that does not disqualify her. You see, that she has had five husbands and that the man she lives with now 
Well, it's not identified in this story as sin. Some more recent commentaries on this story are careful to point out that this woman has been abandoned, rejected, released by all these men. And even the current relationship will not really fully take her into relationship, choosing not to marry her. Now, over the centuries, hearers have, have heard this story as placing the blame on her. And yet the authors of John's gospel does not. Jesus does not. Instead, Jesus invites her into community of relationships. Jesus offers her life. In their conversation about the place for worship in a time when those good, faithful Jews understood that the temple was the only place where one could worship, Jesus names a new reality where the place is not the concern. Rather, the posture, worshiping in spirit and truth, is the key to worship in the coming of the Messiah. In the end, Jesus identifies as the anticipated Messiah. Also in the end, this woman whom Jesus has sent home to call her husband well, she does not go there. She goes instead to the city and tells people about her encounter. This one whose experience was abandonment and shunning is emboldened to go into public space, men's space, and tell her story. <laughs> What's more, many came to believe, to trust in Jesus through her. I suspect that in one way or another, each one of us has some part of our life, some part of our history that we really, really do not want anyone else to know. That experience may bring for us a certain shame. Sometimes it may even, were others to know, bring shunning or even abandonment by the very community that we depend on and would hope would care for us. In the midst of that experience for us, Jesus shows up. Jesus invites you and me into relationship, into his community of followers. Jesus invites us to new life. In this is grace. In this is the reign of God. In this is the love of God. May it be so that we too are emboldened to go out and share our story of encounter with Jesus, with the Messiah, with our experience of God's love made real for us in him so that others may believe through us.